John Lee once said that training the mind is like training a child. When it cries, you have to learn how to decipher its cries. Sometimes it's crying because it's hungry. Sometimes it's crying it's got a stomach ache. And sometimes it's crying simply because it's ornery. It has its moods. And you have to learn how to deal with it in its different moods. Or as a John Furin would say, in its different rhythms. Sometimes all you have to do is feed it, and it's happy. Other times when you have to pick it up, move it around. Other times you have to just let it cry until it's done. The Buddha has an image of a goldsmith. He says the goldsmith has to do three things. He has to put the gold in the fire, but then he has to take it out. And when he takes it out, he can either just simply watch it, look at it, or blow on it to blow away the impurities. In the same way, when you're training the mind, there are three activities, or three qualities you develop at different times. Or it might be better to say that you emphasize them at different times. There's effort, concentration, and equanimity. Effort is when you keep at the mind. It's not obeying you, but you keep at it. Keep trying, trying, trying to get it to settle down. That's like putting the gold in the fire. You have to heat the mind a bit. You can't just let it wander as it likes. You have to bring it to one object and try to make it stay there. Now the effort doesn't have to be simply brute force. You can control the mind by making the breath as comfortable as you can. And think of the breath suffusing throughout the body. But at the same time, you have to be strict with it. If it's going to wander off, you bring it right back. Try to bring it back as quickly as you can. Because otherwise it gets used to wandering. The hour for meditation becomes 55 minutes of wandering and then 5 minutes of concentration. You want to make it a full hour of training the mind, as little wandering as possible. That's when you're emphasizing the effort. Then concentration is once the mind has settled down, you do your best to keep it there. This is like blowing off the impurities. In other words, little things will come and disturb the mind once it's still. But all you, all you have to do is zap them. In other words, you breathe right through wherever in the body you feel there's tension that is related to the thought. And you keep at it. But the effort here is much, much milder than the effort of trying to get the mind to settle down. And finally, there's a watching. Now this can apply to two different things. One is when the mind really settles down and nothing is bothering it at all. You just watch it. You see what little subtle things may come up. The other time when you have to watch it, though, is when it is totally out of control. You want it to settle down, it refuses. So you watch it. What this means is that you don't get involved with it. At least part of the mind stays apart from whatever else the mind is doing. He says, I want to understand this. What's going on here? What's disturbing the mind? And the mind may not show you the reasons very, very readily, very quickly. So you have to watch it for quite a while, and you have to be very patient, but very consistent in watching. It'll run all over the place, but you stay where you are, watching it. Try to develop this quality of being the observer, 
and the mind is putting on a show. It's a pretty bad show. Sometimes it's a show of greed, a show of lust, a show of anger. A simple show of just wanting to wander around. Okay, you watch the show. Whether it's a good show or a bad show, you watch it. And at some point, it will reveal itself. So this is why it's upset, or this is why it's worked up. And then you can do something about it. That's when you put it back in the fire, or you blow off the impurities, or whatever is appropriate. Because you've learned something new about the mind. The mind has lots of different problems. It's a very complex thing, the mind. As John Lee once said, the mind is so complex that all the ways of the mind cannot be put in any book. We have these 45 volumes of the canon, and still they don't cover everything the mind can do. In the Buddha's image, he said the mind is even more variegated than the animal kingdom. Think of all the different kinds of animals there are. Animals in the sea, animals in the sky, animals on land. All that have been, or may be. But the mind has even more variety than that. But fortunately, it's not totally infinite in its crazy variety. The big problems come down to greed, aversion, delusion. And as you get to know the mind, you begin to recognize when which of these is operating. But in the beginning, it's going to have a lot of details and a lot of other idiosyncratic ways of doing. Going out of bounds, coming back. And this doesn't happen only when you're just beginning the practice. There are times, any time in the practice, there'll be days when things just don't fit in with what you've not learned before. That means there's something new of the mind coming up that you haven't mastered yet. So this is when you watch. But again, watch, not simply saying, well, I'm going to be okay and accept whatever comes up. You say, I'm going to watch, I want to understand whatever comes up. And be open to the fact that you're going to learn something new. This is why you approach the, the training of the mind as a skill, but as a skill that hasn't been totally set in stone. Because after all, the, the Buddha taught and transmitted basically the main principles. But your mind is not composed simply of main principles. It has all its details. And so you have to learn how to adjust the main principles to fit in with the details of your mind. That requires some ingenuity on your part and some patience and lots of observation. This is why the Buddha told Rahula, his son, in the very beginning when he was meditating, the first time he gave him meditation instructions, make your mind like earth. Whatever gets thrown on the earth, the earth isn't upset, isn't excited. Now, this doesn't mean that you make your mind insensitive. Actually, it means you just make your mind solid, so you're not blown away by things. Whatever good comes up, whatever bad comes up, you want to simply watch. Where is it coming from? Where is it going? And the more solid you can make your observer, the more you're going to be able to see. The more patient you make the observer, the more you'll see. But again, this is not the sort of patience that simply says, I'll put up with anything. You put up with things so that you can understand them, and then when you understand them, then you can exert some control. And that way you learn new areas of control that you didn't have before. And John Fung would say that when people would come to study with him, Many times they'd come with problems he had never encountered in his many years of meditation. But he had a John Lee's method, too. 
And Method 2 has those seven steps. And he said all problems in meditation can be related to a misuse of one of those steps. So it's always good to keep them in mind. It gives you a framework for asking questions. Is it because you're not focused on the breath? Because the breath isn't spreading well? You're not letting the different breath energies mingle well? You're at the wrong focal point in the body? There are lots of ways that you can take those basic principles and ask questions around them to get some handle on what might be wrong with the mind when you don't understand it. So in the days when the mind doesn't do what you want it to do, it's a time to learn, a time to watch. You look at the gold, and then you figure out when you need to put it back in the fire when you blow on it. In other words, when you use your equanimity, when you use your concentration, when you use your effort. Because if you use just effort all the time, as the Buddha said, you, it's like putting gold in the fire and the bone just, gold just gets burned. If you blow on it, it doesn't get purified, because it first has to be burned before you can blow on it. If you simply watch it, nothing happens at all. Same with the mind. If it's nothing but effort, 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 it's going to burn out. If it's nothing but watching, there's no progress at all. Nothing but concentration, there's no progress. So learn to read the rhythms of the mind. So you can give yourself an all-around training. One that does get quiet, but makes progress at the same time.